Good evening. Thank you, Terry. At last, you gave me the opportunity to speak in French. Normally, I give my speeches in English, but I think at uh, 9 p.m., it's very good to speak one's language. Excellencies, the ministers, excellencies, the ambassadors, I'm very happy to be with you today in this magnificent uh, venue in Marrakesh in order to celebrate the 10th birthday of the World Policy Conference that the theory had put in place with the support of our enterprise since the very start. We are a faithful partner, and I'm very happy to speak tonight before you. And uh, in this tent uh, conference, I had this opportunity to uh, do the same in Montreal. While uh, when I was preparing this speech, I was asking myself what has changed in the world of energy. And I was uh, somehow very surprised when I was able to write something on paper because in between 2015 and 2017, many things happened in the energy world. The, uh, the barrel was uh, 65 and then it uh, it has fallen, then it has actually increased, and we have the uh, Climate Paris uh, Agreement, December 2015, and we have the Iranian nuclear agreement in January 2016, and there is also the uh, uh, Vienna Agreement between uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, OPEP, and uh, Russia, which uh, took place in November 2016. And we have also another event, which is the election of Donald Trump, uh, uh, the head of the White House. Uh, but uh, two years seem to be very short. But we noticed that in the world of energy, uh, not many things changed. But uh, in my speech, I never uh, mentioned the expression electric vehicle. But after two years, if I do not uh, talk about this uh, electrical vehicle. This means that I am thinking only about my petrol and my gas, but I will not be talking about the new technology. But what I can say uh, for this uh, two years period, well, uh, what I can say is that the word of RNG is changing very quickly. And I have said that many a time in my speech. Energy is an asset and a commodity that is very fundamental for the economic and social development of this planet. Whatever we are in this planet, men, women, everybody is aspiring at having energy and have access to energy at first. Well, it seems to me that it is very evident to have access to energy in this eliminated venue. But we have 1.5 billion people who do not have have access to energy. The second fundamental uh, thing is that we need to have access to uh, affordable energy. And the price and the cost of energy is a fundamental factor for all the economic development. And to be in developed countries or, or where we would uh, where actually we have people who are actually complaining about the increase of prices, uh, were it in the emerging countries which uh, are looking for access to this energy, which is the synonymous of uh, economic development and the price therefore is fundamental. We have also a third dimension and this is the dimension of the Paris Agreement because everybody is aspiring at having a clean energy that is not to have CO2. This is the challenge challenge with its uh, three dimensions. And this is the challenge that we are facing in our uh, enterprise. And we like the word energetic transition, which is the buzzword today. But this is really a disturbing because we are not undergoing a transition. But we have uh, to remember that uh, three uh, 300 years before people were using wood, and then they moved to carbon, then to um, oil, then to gas, then to the solar energy, and then to the wind energy. Well, I would like here to highlight that the carbon in uh, this uh, which is actually emanating from two centuries ago. We have actually in coal, actually, 
the primary energy is coal, and this is representing 30 percent of the consumption of energy in this planet. And uh, today, which means that uh, the time in the world of energy is a very long time. Whatever the technological and real revolutions uh, that take place, uh, real that they may be, or powerful that those revolutions may be. Well, it is. We. Well, we can look for a clean energy, but the fundamental thing is that we need this energy. I would like to get back to the word that I know very well, which is the word oil and gas. Uh, but uh, let me guarantee to you that it's not that old as it seems. Uh, in 50 years from now on, we still uh, we, we will still have uh, oil and gas and coal actually, but. And there is an error and a mistake which is made by many people. That is, sometimes we adopt a sort of simple uh, discourse to say that we can actually replace these traditional and conventional energies by new energies. Well, oil and gas uh, and I'm talking about this because this is representing about 50% uh, of the energy in this planet. If we add 30% of coal, this means that the fossil energy will be uh, up to, uh, will represent 80% of the energy in the planet. If I continue drawing this landscape, you know that I can always remind you that the nuclear energy represent atomic energy representing about five percent, the hydroelectric energy representing five percent, and biomass is representing about five percent. I am not talking here about the renewable biomass, organic energy, for example, in African continent and in other emerging can countries. Many women are. Um, making actually their food by using wood and also 3% of the renewable energy in the planet. These things are going to shift and change. If we go back to oil and gas and it is here, uh, this is here the reason for my invitation. We talk about the energy, but we are actually achieving some geopolitical dimensions which enter within the framework of the debate of the World Policy Conference. Let me remind you that two years ago, oil and gas, these are two energies that are concentrated in few, very few countries, that is tens of countries that do have about 80% of of oil and gas uh, reserve. And these are countries, uh, the names of which we have mentioned. These are the Middle East countries, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Iran, Iraq, and Russia also, which is one of the uh, big uh, producers. And we have the United States. These represent 75%. And then we can add Venezuela for oil and other countries for gas. This is to show you my geographic uh, knowledge. But these countries that I am talking about uh, are countries that we here talking about uh, and within the framework of geopolitical uh, situation. There is also another country that we should not forget, and this is China and India tomorrow, because these are the biggest consuming countries. And China has become today the biggest can country that consumes uh, oil and the importing one, and for 15% is consumed by China. And this is an element that we should take take into account the oil and gas word is uh, somehow crossed by different tendencies and waves. I have mentioned uh, two major agreements that uh, uh, these are, for example, the agreement with Ira Iran, and this is the word, the country which has the biggest reserve of uh, gas and the fort reserve. 
of oil. And it's not really that neutral to see that uh, Iran is actually trying to resume a sort of stance uh, among the international community. It is a major country where Total has decided to sign a contract with the first uh, oil and gas uh, group of uh, Iran. And they can talk also about uh, the OPEP agreement, which was entered into between Saudi Arabia and Russia, and who agreed for the first time in the history of oil and gas that Russia uh, would accept to reduce its production in order to control the price, the prices of this commodity. You understand that these are two countries that represent 20 to 25 percent of the global production. They have agreed to reduce their production and to control the price. And this is very important in terms of uh, in terms of a geopolitical alliance with the recent visit of uh, Salman to Russia. It is the first visit ever to Moscow by a king of Saudi Arabia. If we look for uh, the reasons for this uh, visit, we can find them in this agreement uh, that relates to oil, and therefore they want to reduce uh, the price has uh, fallen from 64 to 40 and $40 for the barrel. And I think that for this type of countries, the price of oil is very fundamental. As I said, this price, in fact, this is, something, this is something which is very simple. Well, we cannot actually give many complicated reasons in order to say, to say that this price is fluctuating. When the price is high, this is what happened in between 2005 to 2015, and it has stayed at the price of $100 the barrel. Everybody is going to invest in oil, and when everybody is, is uh, investing, which means that we, may, we supply the market. Uh, and when the price is very high, therefore, the demand is very low. The demand is very low because the energy is very expensive. And between 2005 and 2015, at this very period where the price was very high, this led to uh, technical inventions that are today very uh, fundamental. Now we are talking about the solar energy and the wind energy. If the pr We wouldn't talk about that if the price did not increase during this decade. This, this made uh, the enterprises say that with this price, the solar energy is more cost effective and and at that time, we needed that the, the oil would reach $100 so that it can be cost effective. And uh, now we are saying that the solar system is um, cost effective even if oil is at $50 the barrel. When we talk about oil and gas as conventional energy, with the uh, revolution that the US is witnessing, a country which has a lot of natural resources, their development is related to the pit, to oil. It is because uh, this price has increased. They started to look for oil in the uh, fossil or n unconventional oil. Why? Because in the beginning, in order to make this operation cost effective, they needed uh, that the price be at $100. And these enterprises and these businesses uh, developed, and now it has become, it had become, or it has become actually cost effective at $50 the barrel. Or it can be cost effective even if the price is at $30. And this is something that uh, shows us how we can be uh, optimistic. But this is not possible because when we look at this world with the technology that we have today, we cannot actually imagine what would be the future energy. But uh, 15 years before, I think that the world has changed deeply and the techniques have developed. And therefore, 
Et therefore, we uh, now uh, we want now to see how we can overcome these challenges. We want to see how the energy landscape would be by 2040. Maybe I can impact on uh, through my decisions today on what would happen in in, in 2040. Uh, well, this world of energy will be moving. But how would be the 2040 energy landscape if we keep on the scenario of two degrees that as requested by the Agreement of Paris? Well, fundamentally speaking, these are notions of the market and we want to if you want actually to project ourselves in the future, we have to think about our market and the international agency, energy agency. What does it say by 25 years? It says something that many people forget. And that is, by 25 years on, we will be 8 to 9 billion people on Earth, and this 9 billion people should consume only 10% more than what we consume today. The first effort and tremendous effort that we have to make collectively is to uh, do is to have uh, some rational consumption of energy and to avoid consuming much energy and this is fundamental that is moving from 5.5 billion to 9 billion this means that if we keep on in the same scenario this uh, consumption will increase by 40 percent therefore we have to save energy uh, which is a source of employment and business that we do not mention in many countries and after that, we will um, produce energy, we'll have energy by 2040. We, st we will still have oil and gas that will represent 40 to 45 percent, and total will be, will be there also. But if we want to reach the two degrees, we need to consume less coal. And that is by 15 percent less, because it is the um, less costly energy in India, in China, also South Africa, they consume coal. And when we say to these countries that you have to avoid using your natural resources because of the climate change, I tried that with the, minister, the Indian Minister of Electricity. He answered, we are responsible for 2% of the different gas emissions. Why do you want us to actually slow down our economic growth and development? This is an issue that is very difficult to deal with because each state should actually find a sort of uh, energy, energetic mix. And uh, we will have by then uh, renewable energies by uh, 2040 that will be very, uh, that will be consumed. And this is why Total has uh, chosen to uh, invest in the solar energy and also to invest in renewable energy and wind energy. The, we have two uh, other technologies that will be fundamental if we want to achieve the two degrees of the Paris Agreement. First, we have to store energy, that is, the batteries. To store energy is something which is very complicated. And I think we have many um, engineers here. The electrons are not easy to store. It is very complicated to do so. When I was a young engineer, we were actually trying to figure out how we can store energy. And we were moving forward very slowly. But to store energy is fundamental today when we talk about uh, renewable energy. We should know that when, for example, in Morocco, we have the important projects of the so photovoltaic energy stations. But if we produce 100 megawatts, we will actually reduce today to 15 to 20 percent. We could store 15 to 20 percent. And therefore, because our network is uh, unable to absorb the maximum uh, sun rays and therefore there is no much efficacy if we want if we are able to have efficient storage of energy using the batteries we could store about 50 percent at that moment we would be we would have achieved the sustainable
sustainable energy system that would cater to the demand. You, if you, well, this is why we should not actually, uh, we should not do away with this energy because we still need gas and oil storage of energy. This is something that uh, makes me actually uh, refer to the electrical vehicle. Well, we have uh, published uh, a scenario in our group where we have actually put forward the most aggressive um, scenario that is by 2040, 50% of the vehicles will be electrical vehicles. This is a sort of 8 million uh, perils per day if, uh, out of uh, 100. This is something that will be developed in the cities, but its impact on the consumption of petrol. But this will not lead to the disappearance of petrol because we need oil in order to carry it, to, um, to make planes fly and uh, to use that as an energy in different plants and so forth. And we can use uh, oil for other purposes than mere transportation. But we still be using this uh, fossil energy also. As I said, we have two technologies that we have to develop if we want to keep this uh, two degrees. We have to store energy. And we have another scenario that is at the end, by 2040, 2050, we could continue to use the fossil energy. But we need to do something with the CO2 that we are emitting, whether to capture it or to store it somewhere. It is uh, another major technology that we have to work on. These these are a bit technical matters that I try to simplify. This is a sort of a overview that is fundamental for the economic and social development of humanity. We were well. We won't be right when we. When we spent time in the southeast uh, uh, countries, uh, I could see this gap between countries where populations and governments are looking for access to energy in order to develop, and we are already at a period where we can make energy cleaner. But let me remind you that uh, the consumer now is complaining very much. And this is a complicated issue that could actually evoke the development of behaviors. But we, uh, we uh, from the Occident, we cannot give a lesson to all the planet. And we should assume responsibility in this regard. This is what I wanted to say about these two. Uh, fields. Uh, I just wanted to uh, draw first where we come from and then to show you what are the perspectives uh, in a world that is moving very much. Uh, this is impacting on many countries. Uh, well, I have not. Mm, when I was talking about the uh, renewable energies, I didn't talk about the th three main uh, countries. This is China, which is representing 50% of the world uh, potential. And we have uh, the U.S., which is also an important uh, producer of renewable energy, even if their president does not believe in that. And then Germany. Germany, which, uh, ha which has given a good present to the humanity by setting up aside 20 billion euros per year in order to develop this energy. Thank you very much for your attention.